Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I show you how to, or how not to install an electric power steering in your 66 Mustang. It probably would apply to other years as well, but that's just what I installed it in on mine. And like with most of my videos, I sometimes screw up and I share those moments with you as well. So you know what not to do, but I hope this helps you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Well, another day and another set of new parts. So right now I am working on my new EPAS, E-P-A-S, Electric Power Assisted Steering. I bought it for the Mustang here. Again, this came from Open Tracker Racing. Super excited, ready to get this thing in. It didn't come with instructions. It came with a really nice book with a lot of cool cars in it, but <laughs> no instructions. But so far it seems pretty self-explanatory. This top threaded bar goes on this side. I used some blue thread locker on these two Allen screws right there. This one this is the only part with a spline. So that obviously goes into the bottom of this. And then I have this articulating joint right here. And then this is the collapsible double D part. Pretty solid actually, has some heft to it. But this part fits perfectly right in there. So I'm gonna put this in here and tighten those down. And then the other side here, happens to go right onto this part coming out of my steering box. So I lucked out, somebody online sold me this. I just got a smoking deal on it, freshly rebuilt. I painted it black and yeah, I feel super lucky that I got this, but some of these come with a spline on this end. But thankfully this one during the rebuild already had the double D put on here. So this part, the other end of this fits perfectly right on there. But yeah, I mean, it looks pretty easy to do. <laughs> Knock on wood, even though there's no instructions. So again, I highly recommend Open Tracker Racing. Everything they've done so far has been on the up and up and, and perfect by me. So I appreciate them and their input. All right, so I'm here working on this. And what I actually didn't realize is that there was a second coupler. Uh, again, I don't really know what these are called, but this is the one that's going to attach to my steering box that way. One of these screws is really long. Uh, actually, there's one right there. It doesn't seem like it's supposed to be like that. So what I did here is I actually drilled through this piece of metal where my thumb is and a little bit on the inside of this wall so I could seat that right in there real tight. So that is in there, that's not coming out. This one, I just created a little dimple, actually similar to this dimple that I made right here. I'm actually just realizing that I am an idiot and I made a dimple there for this when actually this goes on this side. I'm really glad I didn't drill all the way through there. That's where a manual might have been good to have. But yeah, so this is gonna slide right in there and this is gonna screw into the steering box. So I think we're good now on that stuff. Uh, right now I am just cleaning all of that and a couple other spots and right over there i just used a wire brush sanded that all down now i'm using some of the uh, metal prep uh, cleaner degreaser so i can get ready for this rust bullet so once that is in and dried i can install the rack so maybe tomorrow well i am jumping absolutely all over the place i'm working on a little bit of this a little bit of that I got my Tesla pedals there. I've got my steering right here. Man, I am just all over the place. I hope I can put this together in something that's watchable. But <laughs> I figured I'd update you guys on the E-Pass. Right now, I just put a little bit of 3M strip caulk around there. This stuff, is it's so funny. I've had this for decades. Back when I was a car audio installer at Best Buy about 20 years ago, or more, it could actually be more. Uh, <laughs> So I don't have any instructions on the E-Pass here, but I'm looking at pictures and stuff online and other videos, and it looks like this is gonna go right about there, but it doesn't call, well, again, I don't have instructions, but I don't see anything about any kind of weather strip around here. And just in case we get some heavy rain, I don't want to get a bunch of water in here. So I'm at least gonna put some 3M strip caulk right in there. I did just test fit this, it's very tight with the, oh, I don't have the other knuckle in here. It's over there.
but it's pretty tight so i had to put some grease around here to just even get it in at all now i'm just going to add this and put it all together okay that is screwed in using the oem screws this is all still loose just in case i need some final adjustment but at least that is in there and hopefully going to be weather sealed i say this as i look at other holes <laughs> that are wide open that i have not addressed yet but that'll be a future problem the other thing i should show you guys is that i did finally cut my tube here this is the tube for the steering column i'm not sure what to do on this end because again there is no manual that's the little trough where the wires go through and with that there i can't fit it around the ring of where is the steering column i think it's in my car so i can't fit it around the steering column it does fit perfectly right there this end so it, that is the perfect diameter for this but not with that there yeah i don't know what the hell i'm doing but i did 14 and a half inches just so you guys know from the front of this tube to right there again i wanted to be able to have some play in this so i can move this forward or back depending on where i end up sitting i'm not sure if i'm going to re be reusing the oem seats or if i'm going to get a racing seat there's still a lot of stuff to do but yeah that's where i'm at it's dark it's late the bills won tonight so that's great but i think i'm gonna call it and this will just have to be a nightly project for the rest of the week trying to get all this stuff done but damn this is looking good yay i like what i'm seeing so i'm working on the steering i have this part done this is going through and i'm pretty sure i have everything done on the outside but here on the inside this just doesn't seem quite right it kind of seems like i have to trim that uh, rod i don't know i've never done this before but when i get it in place and lift it up this is pretty far forward i would think that aluminum piece that says ap1 on it shouldn't that line up with this ring that holds the normal steering column because it's a good two inches off so do i have to trim uh, do i have to trim this rod right here like two inches is that normal is that how this is installed well i have a few minutes so i am trying to get the steering inside this vehicle um the way i had this i had the bar connecting this union to this but i asked online and that is incorrect this is actually supposed to go in the engine compartment so right now i'm trying to get that out and it is all jammed up i put some grease on there i've been hammering it out it is just really stuck in there uh, so trying to fix that because in a nutshell what's going on it's hard to lift up because this thing was actually pretty heavy but this was not fitting up under the dash so i had to look at maybe cutting the bar that went right here but that really wasn't just didn't seem right so i asked online and they said yeah this is supposed to go inside the engine compartment so that's what i am working on now trying to get that part out would be beaten on it a little bit so it can go onto the double d steering box that i have right here don't know why it's stuck so bad but that's what i'm trying to get out and caleb's here work working with me <laughs> but we take take what we can get <laughs> get in there so this is a, a stupid mistake i really wish i hadn't done that but that's why i film this stuff for you guys so you don't make the same mistakes so i got the black i don't know what they're called that knuckle off on this end because i could not get the pipe out and i could not get it out so luckily i was able to get the black knuckle off and i put it on this side here i got everything lined up so now i just have to go on the inside and tap this bar in to get everything seated in there okay ah jeez, so frustrating so that just popped out before I had it all lined up. So I gotta go back around here. If Caleb was just a little bit older, he could help me line everything up, but. Okay, I think we're gonna need two hands for this. All right, I got that together. It does turn nicely. So this steering box, I can't remember if I've talked about it before, is a 16 to one box. I had a 19 to one box in here that had 
the spline fitting right here. I was hemming and hawing over it a lot. I didn't know if I really needed to go to a 16 to one, but I do want this car to be a little more tilted towards performance. So I thought it'd be good to get the 16 to one. And I found a guy online, actually he reached out to me and he happened to have one that's freshly rebuilt with the DD instead of the spline right here. So that was perfect for me. And so just so you know, if you're gonna do something like this too, you have to figure out what kind of spline you have on your steering box. With the double D, it fit perfectly in this whole setup. So now I have, I left the light over there, but now I have the larger double D right here and a smaller double D right there. And now this bar is gonna go in this end and then it's gonna slide into there I might have to taper the edges just a little bit to get it to slide in there smooth. I've also been using some red wheel bearing grease. Seems needed <laughs> for a lot of this stuff. Otherwise, that's a very tight fit. But yeah, it looks like I, from hammering, I have a little lip on there. I'll have to grind that off. And then this will be able to slide in and out there. This will stay stationary in here and knock on wood. Hopefully uh, that'll be good to go and I'll be able to fit the motor up underneath there. But Caleb wants to go inside. So I, my five minutes for the day are up. <laughs> All right, back at it. Got a few minutes before I am summoned back. I had to deburr this one piece that this is sliding into because of my hammering and drilling and stuff. It got a little messed up, but I got it started. Got some red bearing grease in there and I'm gonna take this mallet and just tap on this piece here. Let's see if I get a good camera angle. So if I hold it kind of like that. Still need to go quite a bit, I would say. We're on the right track, I think, but that's nowhere near getting tucked up underneath. And I also don't want to hammer on it too much because the fittings on this side are all pretty perfect. And I don't want this piece to poke through here too much. That actually reminds me, I need to put those lock screws on there. Yeah, I gotta do that right now before I hammer anything more. One step closer, five minutes at a time. <laughs> well, this is definitely a bit of pain, and I think this is all my doing, just because I think when I drill these holes, thinking I was smart, and then maybe just hammering it a little too much, I marred up the edge. But anyways, I think I've got it to a point now where it might be good. I did have to remove this whole motor assembly and right now I'm gonna put it back in place to test fit it maybe this thing is like deceivingly freaking heavy too and it's such an awkward angle and reach all right there we go okay so that's in and my goal has been to get this ring to this point right here makes this shaft look kind of short but we're getting there okay i just had everything together the motor was up here in place and the steering wheel just came too far towards me so i believe this piece has to go in a little further and i'm lucky enough that i have another 66 mustang that's basically new and i just kind of did a visual to see about what the tip of this assembly what it came out to, and it came out to about 10 and a half as it was here. On my other Mustang, it's hard to tell because the steering wheel is on, but it was roughly nine, nine and a half. So right here, I'm gonna subtract about, I'll just do an inch. Looks like it's about three inches right now. So I'll pound this in. Uh, that only went like a quarter inch, so. I'm nervous to put it in too far because uh, it's gonna be impossible to get out. So that's about two and a half. Oh man. Do. Man, it really needs to be, I think, at two. So I'll keep going. Hope I'm not wrong. Okay, that looks like it's pretty close to two, maybe a little bit longer, two and a quarter. And I'll put us all back together again and see if that brings this to the correct location.
Okay, I think we're getting a little bit closer. That kind of looks like more of a realistic length for this. So let me measure this. I'm just measuring from the light switch here because that should be pretty stable, pretty constant. All right, so it looks like to the very tip of this steering column is about, looks like nine. So I think that'll be good. But let's go over to the other Mustang to give it a try over there. And we'll just measure and see what the other Mustang is. Yeah, hopefully you guys can see this on camera. But from the light switch to nine, I think this one might actually be out a little further. So I might have gone in a little too far. I think nine and a half might have been perfect, but let's cross my fingers. Oh, <laughs> that would be a pain to take apart. So let's hope it's okay. I'm gonna continue on with it like it is and tighten everything down. The other thing I have to work out is this, because I don't know exactly where to cut it. I cut it at, I think at 14 and a half the other day, and then I painted it thinking it was gonna be good and it's not even close. Uh, let me wipe my hands, because this is not nice paint, and uh, we can at least put it in place. I was watching a different YouTube video with one of those custom Prius jobs. People have done custom installations with the Prius electric motor, and it involves welding, and I don't weld, unfortunately. So that one wasn't for me. So this is going to be not right, I think. It actually might be a little close, but it's hard to do anything because the wire tray is in there and I'm going to have to work on getting that out of there. So before I cut this one up, I'm going to have to make a few more measurements and make a plan. Sorry about the camera footage. I know you're kind of all over the place, but it is what it is. <laughs> all right, I'm sure I'm out of time and the family needs me, so I'm gonna have to run inside, see what's going on. And I'll probably have to make it a late night out here tinkering later. All right, I'm at it again. Family is appeased for now. I got the seat in, obviously. I've got my steering wheel on where it would be if I left all of these components here. So if I left all of that, this is where it would be. It actually would be a little bit higher. And I think that looks great. So what I just did is I compared it kind of to where it's coming down on the seat. So imagine that was up here. Yeah, I think this is perfect. So it was kind of coming to about here on the seat. And if we want to run over, I can show you on the other Mustang how that one is. So here's how this one compares. Same steering wheel same hub adapter but i'll show you what's different on that one this one i think it actually is closer this way towards the engine i think it's maybe half inch maybe an inch further that way but i'll show you what i have special on the other one all right back over here and i can show you what i have over here now this was not a necessity <laughs> this was just something i happened to see on facebook marketplace it was only like 40 bucks, so I picked it up. But this is a quick detach steering wheel adapter. Let me see if I can set you right there. And that is gonna come right off. Damn, I'm just realizing I won't be able to use my horn with this. <laughs> I put these here, but uh, yeah, that's a bummer. I've got a nice horn button. Damn, <laughs> I guess you don't need those in race cars. And I didn't think of that. So you just put it back on there and there you can't really tell now because there's lots of play but in the actual bracket itself there is no play so that's why this is sitting towards me just probably about an inch is because of this extra bracket right here so other than that it looks pretty good i wanted to set all this up to test fit all of these parts of course but also now that this is all in place i can know how long my tube needs to be from here to the back so I've got everything set up over there. It's getting late. It's been a really long day. I don't want to make any mistakes. So I'll probably leave this to tomorrow when I'm thinking 100% clear. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got everything set out here. I've got some painter's tape. I'm going to wrap it around here like I did the first time and measure from the front to wherever and figure out where I need to cut. And I still need to figure out this because it's spot welded 
right up here. There's surprisingly little info about this online. I've just seen people kind of hacking it together, honestly, with DIY Prius builds. But I'm gonna tinker around with it a little bit more. Oh, and here's the nice horn button that I wanted to use. I had this in my other Mustang, but it made more sense to have this logo in this car because I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but it's gonna have gold stripes. It's gonna be a Hertz replica, even though yes, I know it's a coupe, but I found some pictures online of this guy who did an amazing job on his fastback making the stripes and, and logos and everything just look nicely aged and worn like an old race car. And that's the goal for this car. I want it to look like an old race car that's been around for a while. It's worn on the outside, but on the inside, it has all modern state-of-the-art stuff. So that's the goal. And that's a long story of why I think this button is gonna be perfect in this car, but I might not be using it now. <laughs> we'll figure that out. All right, that's enough for now. I'm gonna call it a night. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Well, I lied. I'm back in it because I just keep thinking about it. So I'm thinking if I take my tube all the way to the end of this column right here, this little ring piece right here, supposedly the OEM tube, the steering tube, will fit right around this. So if I take it right to, actually there's a stopper right there. If I take it right up to that stopper and then I put it to the very bottom of my steering wheel adapter here, the hub adapter, right at the stopper is 13 and 5 eighths. Then I'll leave about a 16th of an inch gap. 13 and 5 eighths is what I need to cut that down to. But that's not just the tube because that also includes this piece here. Let me see if I can set this up to show you guys. So this is what makes up the steering shaft. This is just a cover to hide your wires. That goes on there, but this goes right on top of it. So I need to include this lip here. This uh, maybe an inch right there. So if I measure from this point back, it'll be 13 and 5 eighths from the front here. So let me get some tape wrapped around this pipe and get some markings made. So this can only go on one way. It locks in right there. Right there is 13 and 5 eighths. So just the tube, without having the front piece here, 12 and 12 sixteenths. Let me just double check this. Six. Now I'll call it 12 inches, 13 sixteenths. I'm probably being over precise, but again, this is very expensive and I don't want to F it up. So there it is. And I'm tempted to cut that too tonight, but I think I really should call it. <laughs> okay. That's it for now. Going to bed for real this time. All right, friends, it is the next day and I am back at it. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. So here I am working on this thing again. Been thinking about this a lot. I did cut that, so that's already to length. Um, so this notch is gonna be on the left side. This is where the turn signal stock is. So it's exactly at the nine o'clock position. And I'm here looking and lining everything up in between this piece here and this ring here, I can't really exit the wires on the bottom because otherwise they would be coming out like right here. And I don't really like that. I don't want to see them. These are the wires for the turn signals and everything. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I made a little notch right there. I just made a little dot. I measured up from this edge up three inches and I made a little scratch right there and I'm gonna drill a hole right here, install a grommet. So the wires are actually gonna come out pretty much directly on the left side. And I'm doing that because once this is all up and in place, that means the wires should come out right about here and I can run them inside this channel and I won't have to see them. If anything, actually, I should go up maybe like the 10 o'clock position for the, the hole for the wires. So it's gonna be just like that with the notch at the nine o'clock. And I put this little dot there at the nine o'clock, but I'm thinking maybe I should up that to about the 10 o'clock position so the wires can come up through the dash 
on the top. Yeah, let me change that up and uh, I'll drill the hole. And hopefully this works. Hopefully you can see this way. I ended up doing three holes here. So the first one on the bottom is the one I first made, which is at the nine o'clock position. And I didn't like that. I wanted it higher. So I did one about 10 o'clock, but then I put it in place and it looked like it might come out too high. So I just kind of split the difference and I put a third hole right there in the middle and I'm going to drill that one. And then I have this o-ring that i'm going to use and put it right in there okay i've got that hole drilled and i had to take out this little channel it was just going to be totally in the way and there was no way for me to get inside here and cut it i just don't know how to do that so i drilled the welds out and i just removed the whole thing looks like i'm probably going to paint this again but it's okay i think we've got it. I just got to clean up this hole a little bit and i've got this rubber grommet that's going to fit right in there hopefully well here it is i got the burrs cleaned up a little bit cleaned up the end, obviously took the guard out, and yeah, it's time to go test fit it. Doesn't seem to want to go around this ring right here, but maybe with some persuasion, because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to fit there. Oh, maybe I just gotta clean up this ring a little bit. Looks like I left too many burrs on that one. Yeah, but then it should fit on. So I'll have to clean that up a little bit more, but we're getting there. Okay, cleaned it up a little bit. Yep, and it goes on. Need to get a little love, but yeah, it's going on. So I'm gonna take it off, get it, give everything a good painting again. And when I put it on, I'll probably put a little bit of grease on here to make sure it slides on okay. I've got one screw hole already on. I'll probably do another one. Okay, I got this all reassembled. Have it finished the wires here at the end. But I've got the grommet in there. Got everything together. Now it's time to test fit it in the car and see if what I did is gonna work. So here we go. Put some lube on that let me get this off before i break it yeah i'm gonna be right back i'm gonna put some uh, grease on there to help it get in there okay with that grease it just went on nicely so i'm gonna tuck the motor up pretty high and that looks like a pretty good position Wow, is that really in there? So we've got plenty of clearance. Oh, there's some old junk paper I forgot to take out. Let's see. Yep, just like that. This bracket's still a little bit loose, but you can see where I brought my wires right off the side. But holy cow. After many, many days, it is finally in there. I can't believe it's in there. Let me uh, get my steering wheel. Alright, so you can see this. This is a little ring that goes right in there to get center it, but I already lubed up the bearings that were in there. The bearings seemed a bit rough, but it's Thanksgiving and I just have some time and I want to get it done. So if it, I hope it doesn't end up getting scratchy or anything, but I could get some new bearings if I have to. So there is that. Don't know what it's called, but it's a little ring that looks like it goes right down in there. And then I've got a little spring right there. And this is my adapter forever sharp. I don't know, but I got it on Amazon. I'll have links in the description below. For now, I'll just put it on. Yeah, you can see the the steering wheel nut right there. Just enough, man. Just enough. Wow, that's, that's quite close. 
but I'll just put that on by hand right now. Okay, only two screws for now, because that's temporary. And for the very first time in many months, steering wheel, so it's not powered. One, two, three, four. So four turns, put it right here. So that should be about the center. Hey, and it's finally in. Now I still have to do a bunch of electrical, but that is pretty awesome. It's tucked up away in there. Location seems totally fine. Seems like it's, it might be a little high, but I should be able to see my gauges really well. And I think if I had a standard steering wheel in it, it wouldn't be as high. Steering wheel would be a little bit closer. Hey, pretty cool. Glad that's finally on there. Now it's time for the electrical. Okay, so hopefully you can see this in here. I just wired up my horn and all the turn signals. Turn signals don't work, but they didn't work when I started. So I still have to uh, troubleshoot there. I was hoping it was maybe the switch or the OEM wiring or something, but nope, I'll have to troubleshoot that a little bit, which is okay. That's right up my alley. But I think I found a spot for this box. It seems like it fits perfectly right up here. I don't think you would have this space unless you remove the air intake tube like I did, but I'm going to put it right there. The only thing is though, I don't have access to the other side of this piece of metal. So I'm going to have to order some of those, I think they're called captive nuts or something like that, where you just drill a hole, you put them in there and you just make a mounting location. So I'm going to get some of those. So I can't get this done today, unfortunately. But that's okay because none of this is going to be drivable for still quite a while. A sneak peek to a future project is this right here. <laughs> These are pedals out of a Tesla. A lot of people when they do EV conversions use the accelerator pedal in their conversion. But I am hoping to use this whole mechanism, which it would fit up there quite nice if it wasn't for the big bracket right there that I just mounted that holds the steering column and, and keeps all that in place. So I think I might have to do some modifications to that, trim it down a little bit to try to get this up around in there. It's fairly close for being built 60 years apart <laughs> and different powertrains, but that is a future project. For now, I'm gonna have to go onto the computer and order some of those captive bolts. Captive, no, captive nuts, I think they're called. So I guess that is as far as I can get right now. There are no shortage of projects to work on with this car though. All right, back to working on the power steering. I picked up the screw assortment set from Harbor Freight and I'm using this right here, the coarse screws, this one. And I'm just gonna use these tiny screws to lock in the steering column. So I just drilled this hole a little bit larger and I've been working in, I don't have a tap and die set. So I've been working this in here just putting in a little bit, backing it out a little bit, and I'm gonna use some Loctite, and I think it'll work. I'm gonna use one here and one on the other side, right over there somewhere. <laughs> and this should keep the steering column here connected to the uh, new motor. I'm surprised that it doesn't come with it, but also the instructions are pretty rough, so it is what it is. Okay, I got this side in. It's hard to tell exactly how far to screw it in, but I think it's in there just enough so that it catches and won't turn or anything, but now time for the other side. Okay, got the second hole drilled right here. And just so you know, for these particular screws, I'm using a 3 16th inch bit, and it seems like it's perfect. So I have to go get another screw and work it in here. All right, now it is time to mount this control box. I've been looking it all over. I thought about getting some of those nuts. What are those called? Captive nuts? No, I don't know, I can't remember what they're called, but these nuts where you drill a hole and then you stick them in the hole and then you collapse them down by screwing in a bolt and it smushes them down and sandwiches the metal. It kind of seems like overkill. This is a hefty box, but I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I don't think it needs anything that heavy duty. It's also gonna be kind of a pain to get up in here with a tool. I guess a ratchet I'd be able to, but my plan is to put it 
Let's see if I can show you right up there. So you can see the cover I put on where the air box was. And if I move these wires, I've got a spot right there that is a perfect size for this little control box. So I'm just gonna use two self-tapping stainless screws and put them in there. It's really hard to tell. I mean, I've never had a fender off on a Mustang, but it kind of looks like there's nothing in there. So I think it's gonna be fine. I've decided that's what I'm gonna do. So that's the plan and hopefully that goes well. <laughs> okay, I got the box mounted. You can actually see it through my dashboard up here. I just used two stainless self-tapping screws in the sides. And that is also how it gets its ground. So make sure when you do that, you also scratch a little bit of the paint off so it gets a good solid ground wherever you mount it, whether you mount it here or somewhere else. It's tough to get up under there, but I do have everything wired, everything connected. I have a little box here that I'm gonna be mounting just for any kind of accessories or anything I want. So I did wire it right to this with a 25 amp fuse. And then there is a little tiny wire that comes out of it right here. Hopefully you can see that. Again, I don't have instructions, but that looks like it gets wired to the ignition switch. I have a kind of a custom setup <laughs> up here, but this is my ignition switch, ignition relay. So I just ran a yellow wire down to there and that is going to activate the unit when the power is on. Let me see if I can back up the camera a little bit. So when I click it on, you can hear it click. So it does activate, but it's impossible to tell how much assist I'm getting right now because I don't have any wheels. I don't even have the uh, steering system finished up there under the hood. I did move this dial back and forth and I did notice a very slight change, but until I get the tires on and on the ground, it, it'll be impossible to really tell, but it is smooth as silk, feels very nice. And oh, and yeah, about this, there is an existing hole under here uh, one of these I was going to use and I was just going to drop this right down But if you look at the potentiometer, it has some exposed terminals right there So I'm going to wrap that with electrical tape and make sure that doesn't conduct and contact the metal Under here when I mount it into these holes because this is going to sit straight down. I also might shorten this I don't see any reason why I can't cut it a little bit. It's just plastic There's no connections or nothing inside this so I'll get it in place, but at some point, I think I'm probably gonna cut that down to maybe in half and just see how that goes. But that is it. That is how you install or how you don't install an EPAS in a 66 Mustang. Granted, my setup is a little different, but all the connections for steering are gonna be pretty much the same. Unless, of course, you get a different steering box. The steering box I have, come to find out, is actually from like a 67 to 69 or something. Mine did have the DD shaft, as you saw in the previous clips, but for the pitman arm, I actually needed a one and an eighth inch pitman arm. So that's why the steering isn't done under the hood yet. I was hoping to get this all done and finally get the front end of the ground, but I gotta wait for that correct pitman arm. I just didn't realize my box was from a newer Mustang. Well, that's it guys. I hope that helped you. Feel free to leave questions or comments in the section below. I will try to, help you out if you have any issues with it but that's it thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye